This is the NDB video that nobody asked for. To give us a modern twist, we're going to track the NDB using the Garmin G1000 so that you could see how to use an NDB for navigation, and you may learn a thing or two about glass cockpits too. We're at Port Angeles, Washington, so that we can fly a rare NDB departure procedure, the Water 7. For runway 26, we want to make a climbing right turn and intercept the 075 bearing from the Elwa NDB, which is out to our west. Let's set up the NDB in our ADF, which is incorporated on the G1000. At the bottom of the PDF, we'll begin by pressing the ADF DME soft key. This is how we can tune the NDB station. The frequency is 515, so we'll set that up and flip it active by pressing enter. To view the navigation for the NDB, we're going to push the PFD option soft key, then bearing 1. Notice the text ILS and NAV1. We want to have this track the ADF we just set. Press bearing 1 again to cycle through the nav sources to get ADF. It's all dashes because we're unable to pick up the signal from the ground here, but once airborne, we should expect that to read a bearing and a white arrow to appear on the HSI display above. The procedure has us flying out on the 075 bearing to the water intersection, which is on the 310 radial from the Seattle VOR. So let's set that too. It's 116.8 and we flip it active. We'll push PFD options again, and now bearing 2, which pulls up nav 1. This is going to show us yet another arrow on the HSI pointing towards the VOR, which we'll also see in flight once we've acquired the signal. The procedure has us climbing to 5,400 feet, so we'll set that up on our flight director for the departure. As we take off and climb out, we see the ADF acquire a signal. The frequency now comes up, with bearing information as well. There's also now a thin arrow on the HSI. This is pointing the direction to the NDB station. It's right off of our nose, which makes sense, as the station is lined up pretty nicely with the extended center line of runway 26. 400 feet above the departure end of the runway, we start our right turn. We want to intercept the 075 bearing, so we'll fly about a 040 heading to do so. Meanwhile, as we turn, notice we've picked up the Seattle VOR also, indicated by this arrow. Now, here's what we're looking for to know when we've intercepted the 075 bearing off the NDB. The tail of the arrow is pointed at about 085 degrees. We want it at 075. The memory aid for bearing pointers and ADFs like this is push the head, pull the tail. What does this mean? We want to pull the tail towards 075, towards the left. So we fly further left of 075, like we're doing on this 040 heading. This left heading will pull the tail of that arrow gradually towards 075. Once there, we turn right to track outbound along that bearing. You may have noticed that it's a pretty windy day. The wind is out of the north at about 15 knots. The G1000 shows it's blowing straight across our nose left to right. We'll have to account for this tracking the NDB bearing. I want to point out an often overlooked feature of the G1000 NXI, this pink diamond called the current track indicator. This is our current track over the ground. It's the same as our GPS track you'd find on the MFD. It differs from our current heading due to the wind pushing us to the right. When we're trying to pull the tail left towards 075, it's our track represented by that pink diamond which should be left of 075. Right now it looks to be right on top of 075, so we'll need to fly a bit left of this in order to effectively pull the tail. Now that our track is about 065, we should watch that tail swing all the way to 075. We'll also know we're there when the bearing readout on the bottom shows the reciprocal of 075, or 255. At that point, we're going to turn right such that our pink diamond is on top of 075. This will give us the proper wind correction to keep tracking along the departure course. Let's play with the wind a bit. We're going to increase the velocity and make it blow from the other direction. So now it's blowing us right to left. When we stabilize, notice the pink diamond is now showing about a 065 track. That won't keep us on our desired bearing anymore. If we don't correct, the tail will start swinging left of 075. We're off course. How do we correct? Push the head, pull the tail. We need to pull the tail from 070 to 075, to the right. So we need to fly right of 075. We'll try a heading of about 080. Will that be enough? 
Check the pink diamond. It's on 075. It should be right of it. So let's turn further. Now that the diamond is to the right of 075, it'll pull the tail right towards 075 again. Meanwhile, as we're doing that, keep an eye on the nav2 arrow. When its tail points to 310, we'll be on that radial from the Seattle VOR, telling us we've reached the water intersection, the end of the procedure. When the nav1 tail of the arrow is back on 075, we're back on course and can turn left to get a heading, which puts that pink diamond on 075. As we hit the 310 radial from Seattle and reach water, let's have a look at tracking to the NDB. We'll turn around to the right. We want to track back along the same bearing, 255, in towards the NDB. Let's let ourselves get off course. Notice the pink diamond is to the right of our desired 255. So the head of the arrow will begin to swing left. We want to correct. What do we do? Push the head, pull the tail. We need to push the head to the right. So we want to put that pink diamond on the left of the head and push it towards 255. This heading at 240 does that. The head of the arrow gradually makes its way back to 255. We've corrected again, applying the push the head part of our memory aid. So we've put a modern twist on NDB flying to give you a sense of some of the advanced functions of the G1000. Obviously you can overlay your GPS on any of these procedures when flying them in real life, but this is what's going on under the hood, so to speak. Check out all our ground schools, including our Transition to Glass Cockpits course, at the link here or in the description.